going on YouTube? So I'm gonna do a quick little recap of these Tusk crash bars. Uh, how they go on <clears throat> the Yamaha T7, just installed them. <clears throat> Pretty straightforward, but there's a couple little pro tips I'll give for you guys. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, just roll, <clears throat> excuse me, just roll 300 miles on it. So still have a long way to go to get it broke in. But in all reality, like I said, it's pretty straightforward with the instructions. The instructions are actually, they do really well telling you what has to happen. But let me give you some pointers. So first off, <clears throat> this bracket right here, this is all new. So you're going to take the factory bracket out, factory hardware out, and put this bracket in. You can see all of the uh, silver bolts versus black. That's how you know that I replaced them. So that's pretty straightforward. <clears throat> Got something in my throat. I apologize. Here's where it gets kind of tricky. So this is the right side of the bike. And the factory bolt that is right here that you have to take out, um, there is actually a little washer behind the frame of this bar against between the bars and the frame there's a little black uh washer that needs to stay in place and the instructions do spell that out don't remove that washer on the right side the other issue is the distance even though it doesn't look like it on camera between the bolt and the uh plastics right here the fender if you will this distance not big enough for a socket and uh even the short little stubby socket wrench it does not clear so it's a pain in the royal rear end to get that out and put that in what i had to do was put the the socket on with an extension to get it out past here and i was able to do it but Slow down, think about it, because that drove me crazy just trying to get the factory bolt out. When you're installing this, everything needs to stay loose until you get everything in place. This side has this here. Uh, you know, I, I think that, I'm sorry guys, I don't even know what fluid is in that. I haven't got that far yet, but if you look right here, you'll see the corner of this and the new um, mounting bracket for the bars, make sure that goes behind this or you're gonna suck this into place and you're gonna be really sorry you did that. Lastly, this bolt and the one on the other side are two different sizes. Pay attention to that in the instructions because I overlooked it. This is the shorter one. The other side, the right side of the machine as the instructions call it, is the longer one with that washer. So just a couple things to pay attention to um, when you mount this up. And again, leave everything really loose because I'm getting, get the camera right, a wrench back here to hold these nuts while you tighten the front. The nuts are very close to these bars on both sides. You have to get everything very loose in order to get a wrench back in there and get them done. Once that's done, everything goes pretty easy. You're torquing your frame bolts down there to 41 foot-pounds on each side and smooth sailing from there. So it took me all of about 30 minutes probably to install these. And again, that was never doing it before and a little trial and error. If you have a center stand, guys, man, that's going to be coming here soon. Working on the bike as it's on its kickstand like this on its side with the handlebars cranked over, you know, it makes it really difficult with these trees uh, in the way, the shocks, if you will, to get in there and get the spacing. So I had to have my kid hold that straight. Uh, you can, if you would like, try to access that stuff from the top. It's, uh, it's actually, let me show you the other side. It's not as bad. There we go. So you can see there's one, there's one. More than one way to skin a cat. I'm not a smart man by any means, just giving you kind of a rundown of what it took, but 
I think they look good. I think they're going to serve the purpose that I need them to serve, hopefully. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to let me know. I'm going to be probably doing uh, little recordings on this for every little upgrade I make. We're going to put some big amber lights in the front off of these crash bars underneath the, the main headlights. I want to be as bright as I can be just for a visibility purpose. And then once that's done, looking at getting the, uh, the, not the pannier bags with the, the racks, but the, the rackless luggage, if you will, either by Tusk or, uh, I just lost the other one. Giant loop is the ones that I was looking at. So Tusk or giant loop and I'll do some rear bags probably a fender eliminator not sure i'm gonna do a tank bag yet to be determined but one thing that i actually am kind of making a higher priority right now are the tires these pirelli scorpions are awesome on the road smooth as can be in loose gravel i don't have confidence in the bite on the front so i'm still getting used to the bike being a heavier machine you know than a dirt bike obviously um so I'm sure some of that's gonna come with a little bit more riding and experience, confidence, et cetera, but I will be replacing these tires with a little bit more of a off-road knobby setup, not full-blown knobs, um, because I wanted to still be, you know, decent at 65, 70 miles an hour on the highway. Because most places you go nowadays, if you're not running 70, you're getting ran over. So but these Scorpion Pirellis are probably going to come off sooner than later um, and get something a little more aggressive for the, the trails and the dirt and whatnot. But anyhow, <clears throat> like I said, if you guys have questions on that, let me know. This uh, went pretty, pretty decent. Got them off uh, Rocky Mountain ATV MC. I think they were $1.99 for the Tusk Crash Bars. And I think they turned out well going to put some stuff on them and, and go from there so anyhow just thought i'd give it a share thanks y'all like and subscribe if you so wish see you on the next one